Hello, 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 hello. I'm going to discuss with you the solutions to the organ pipe problem. This organ pipe is 76 centimeters long. It's open here, it's open here. There is a sound cavity here. And I was discussing with you the frequencies, the lowest possible frequency, which I call the fundamental, first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic, and so on. I demonstrate this in my lectures, number 26 of 802, and lecture number 9 of 803. And in lecture 8 of 803, which you may also want to observe, you will see more details about the math. Students always brought in musical instruments, and that was really fun all by itself. To remind you of the problem, I generated the lowest possible frequency that I could generate, which is this frequency. And I suggested to you that that was the fundamental. I then generated one step up, and I suggested that that was the first harmonic, and then I went another step up, and I suggested that that was the second harmonic. All right, let us take a look here at what I discussed in great detail during my lectures. This is the length of the organ pipe, open here and open there, length is 76 centimeters. One way that you can think of the wave pattern in resonance is that you think of the pressure as a function of time and as a function of location in the tube. And when I say pressure, I always mean overpressure, over and above the outside world, or under pressure, which would be lower than the outside world. If it's open here and open there, the pressure here must always be the same as outside, and the pressure here must also always be the same as outside. We call those, therefore, pressure nodes. In the fundamental, the lowest possible resonance frequency, in the center here, is what we call a pressure antinode. That means the pressure can be higher than outside, then become the same as outside, then go lower than the outside, becomes the same as outside, and become higher again. So that's why we call this the pressure antinode. That's the first, that's the lowest frequency. Not for it, that is the fundamental. The first harmonic has an extra note, pressure note here. Note here, note here, and a pressure note here. And it has a pressure anti-note and a pressure anti-note here. So that means if here in the pipe the pressure is above the outside, then here it is below. And so these two anti-notes oscillate like this with the frequency of the first harmonic. And you can do your own homework with the green curve which then would be the second harmonic. I arrive in my lectures that the resonance frequencies as a function of n, n being 1 for the fundamental, 2 for the first harmonic, and 3 for the second harmonic. The speed of sound times n divided by 2L. I have taken for the Speed of sound, 340 meters per second. Which is not so intuitive. The speed of sound for an ideal gas does not depend on pressure. But it does depend on temperature. Of course it also depends on molecular structure and on molecular weight, but that's a different issue. So the speed of sound for helium, for instance, is about three times higher than for dry air, and for hydrogen I think it's about four times higher. But that's a separate issue. Let's stick to air now. So, the speed of sound does depend on temperature. And if you use about 
the temperature has to be, by the way, in degrees Kelvin. It's proportional to the square root of the temperature in degrees Kelvin. If you use about 20 degrees centigrade, which is 293 degrees Kelvin, then you'll find about 340 meters per second. Maybe you'll find 342, that's a detail now. This is close to 767 miles per hour. That's the reason why commercial airplanes can never, relative to air, reach that speed, because they would break apart, because they are not designed to go close to this speed of sound. They have to be substantially below that. So, I derive in class then that the frequency n is 1 for the fundamental, n is 2 for the first harmonic, n is 3 for the second harmonic speed of sound and the length. And when I use this, I find for the fundamental 224 hertz, for the first harmonic 447 hertz, and for the third, for the second harmonic, and is three for the second 671 hertz. There is an effect which I do not discuss during my lectures, but I want to mention it here, which we call the effective length of an organ pipe. The effective length is always larger than the length that you measure. This was first discussed in the literature in 1871 by Lord Rayleigh. And the length that you have to add to the measured length to use this result, that length is larger by an amount delta L, which is 1.2 times the radius of the organ pipe, which in our case is 1.5 centimeters. So we have to, re we have to add to this length 1.8 centimeters. So instead of 76 centimeters, I should have used here 77.8 centimeters. So the frequencies that I calculated would then all be low by 2.4 percent. And so, if I fine tune the answers, the fundamental would be very close to 218 hertz. The first harmonic 437 and the second harmonic 655 hertz. Now comes the surprising news, which was also pointed out to me already in 1999. No, it was actually <laughs> in 2002. No, it was in 1999 by my uh, 802 students. Some of them measured the frequencies. They measured it in their dormitories in a clever way. And some of my viewers also measured it with their iPhones. And they sent me the results. And they concluded that what I believed to be the fundamental, what I believe to be 224 hertz, what I believed to be the fundamental was actually the first harmonic. But otherwise, I made you believe that that lowest frequency was the fundamental, but they proved beyond the shadow of a doubt that I never excited 224, it never came close to that. I'll show you the measurements. Six people sent me their measurements. I only list here the results of the first two. The lowest frequency that I was able to produce for 20 hertz. One person for 18 hertz, the other person. The second frequency that I was able to produce was 625 and the other person 627 hertz and the highest frequency that I could produce was 840 hertz and 836 for the other person. And so they concluded that the fundamental was very close to 210 hertz and I never ever was able to produce that. 
Now comes the question. So the simple fact that I believed it was the fundamental, but that there was the first harmonic, that I don't have sleepless nights about that. What is more, as I said, it was already pointed out to me by my students at MIT. What is more interesting to me is why then, if the if the value that they measured for 20, why is that so different for my value of 447? Maybe I should have measured for 37 if I take the end effect into account. Well, the difference between what they measure and what I measured, comparing this number with that number and comparing this number with that number, is 4%. If the temperature were the reason for that, it would mean that the difference in temperature between what they heard and what I predict was 8%, because it's 4% in frequency, so the temperature must have been in, in this area where I am, must have been about 8% in degrees Kelvin lower than what I assumed, namely room temperature. And so the temperature in my area should have been very close to zero degrees centigrade. I can assure you it was not. So the fact that my viewers and my students measured a frequency which was about 4% lower than what you would expect with room temperature cannot possibly be explained with the temperature itself. So why is there this difference of 4% in the frequency? I don't know. Could it be the humidity in air? Because this result that you have here for dry air, the speed of sound in air, which is closely independent of pressure, is about 20.05 times the square root of the temperature in degrees Kelvin. Could it be that if you add, if you change the air and you give it a humidity of 30%, that it would be very different? I do not know the answer. I've never looked into that. If you want to do that, be my guest. Do I have sleepless nights about the fact <laughs> that there is a 4% difference between the frequencies. No, not really. <laughs> not really. I find it quite amazing, actually, that with a simple toy of this, and with just air flowing by, that you can produce harmonics. And okay, It's true that this is not the fundamental, but this is the first harmonic. But what is interesting that if I rotate faster, that you get a quantum jump in the frequency. So you jump immediately to the next level, which is the first, this is already the first harmonic. So this is the second harmonic. And this is the third harmonic. And those are the values that people measured. I hope I have not confused you more than was necessary. I thank particularly the viewers who went through the trouble of measuring the frequencies and who pointed out to me, which I now remember was also done to me in 1999, that what I believed is the fundamental really is the first harmonic. And what I believe to be the first harmonic is really the second harmonic. And what I believe to be the second harmonic was really the third harmonic. I cannot explain and have no sleepless night about the fact that even though these two people agreed very closely, look at the value that they measured here, 420 and 418, why I would have predicted with my simple math that it should be closer to 437. I have no explanation for it and frankly speaking, I don't care. Maybe you do 
And if you think you know, send me your answer. Have a nice day. Take care. And of course we'll be friends. Of course. I'd like to add something very interesting. Three of my viewers have what is called in Dutch an absolute gehoor. I don't know quite what the English for that is. Absolute hearing, maybe, I don't know. So they can evaluate with their ears and their brains what the frequencies are of tones that they hear. All three told me that the ratios of the three tones that I produced were not three to two to one. Therefore they said, your lowest frequency could not possibly have been your fundamental. One of the three mentioned that the ratio of the three tones that I produced were four to three to two. So he concluded that the lowest frequency that I produced was already the first harmonic. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? They never made any fancy measurements with electronics or with smartphones. Just their ears and their brains. I think that's incredible. I want to add one more thing. If you take my 803 course, you will learn how to calculate resonance frequencies in a box. And the box has three dimensions. You can change those dimensions any way you want to. And I do a demonstration, which I think is a mind-boggling demonstration. I make predictions about the fundamental, first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic, and all the way up, and I demonstrate that those resonance frequencies indeed exist. But to make a long story short, if you made a box which is very long, and the cross-section, say, was a square, then you will also immediately see that the larger that square is, relative to the length of the box, the lower the fundamental frequency is. And if you make that cross-sectional box very, very, very small, compared to the length, then there is no, so to speak, end collection, as we call that an end collection with the organ pipes. So, it is intuitive that the larger the radius of the organ pipe is, the larger what people in the organ business call end effect, the larger that end effect is. Taking 803, all of that will be completely obvious. We don't call it end effect, of course. <laughs>